house of Mary, bless me on all saints above. In these times of selfish living, teach, oh teach us how to love. Very good morning to each and every one of us. Good morning, good morning. Father. Good morning, we thank the Lord for this new day. We ask him to bless us in our prayer time. Let us pray. Lord, our God, on this feast of the presentation of your son, Jesus Christ, in the temple, that all who wait for him might find him and in him they might serve the world. Grant that we, your children, also may be open to find your son in, his, in the temple and that our hearts may be ready to follow his words unto us. In this new day, grant unto us protection from evil and calamity. With our world suffering from a pandemic, grant, O oh God, unto us the protection, physical and spiritual, that all of us need for all our brethren who are now suffering seriously in the hospitals and now on their sick, some on their dying bed, have mercy upon them. And for all those who have died, O oh God, grant unto them your mercy, your mercy in the place of bliss. Speak to us, O oh God, once again, as we present ourselves at your feet. For we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is the 2nd of February. We celebrate, recall the feast of the presentation of the Lord. Our reading is from Luke chapter 2, verse 22 to 32. I take the reading. When the days were complete for the purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every nail that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle dove or two young pigeons, according to the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for the revelation 
to the Gentiles and glory for your people, Israel. Beloved, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us allow ourselves a moment of silence over the word of God. Arise, Catholic faithful, rejoice and renew. My dear friends, today is the feast of the presentation of the Lord. If it is possible for you to attend the Holy Eucharist and attend Mass, I would seriously advise that today, each and every one of us must find the time to attend Mass. If you cannot attend Mass for very obvious reasons, then you want to spend time in a chapel to pray. You may want to walk into a chapel to pray. Spend the time waiting for the Lord to be pre present like Simeon and Anna were in the temple praying. For some of us who are in lockdown, this may even still be difficult to go into a chapel to pray. Go into the corner of your house. Go into the corner of your heart. Kneel down and spend some time in the temple of your heart and pray. Today, we are, the gospel is from Luke chapter 22, verse two, chapter two, verse 22 to 32. In order for you ask to understand this text very well, I shall please ask all of us to take our time today to read Leviticus chapter 12. Leviticus chapter 12. Remember how we have learned how to use our Bibles. So now, maybe it will be good for us on Saturday when we do our Bible sharing to do a little thing on, on that, how we use our Bibles to learn a little bit from Luke chapter two, verse 22 to 32. We will be, we will be directed to Leviticus chapter 12. And there we will learn a lot about the purification of the firstborn child who is either a boy or a girl. There is a different ritual for the boy or different day for the boy. The number of days differ. If it is a boy, it is 40 days. If it is a girl, it is 80 days. And we shall read a little more why this purification is to be done. Now, I want you to also note in the text how Jesus is referred. He says that, he, uh, Simeon is not to see death until he has seen the Christ of the Lord, the Christ of the Lord. Such a beautiful expression that needs a little bit of reflection. Who to you is the Christ of the Lord? Now, dear friends, today the church celebrates the feast of the presentation of the Lord, which occurs 40 days after the birth of Jesus. Now, why 40 days? If you go to Leviticus chapter 12, 
you will find out why. I told you a while ago that when it is a male child, you wait to do this purification of, and this purification is directed at the mother. It is directed at the mother, okay? You find all the explanations there in Leviticus chapter 12, okay? Now, if it is for a boy, child, firstborn, it is 40 days. So today is exactly 40 days when the whole church celebrated or made the memory of the nativity of Jesus Christ. So today we end the full cycle of the Christmas season or the nativity season. Today is when everything totally ends, okay? Now, today is also known as the Candle Mass Day. Since the blessing and the procession of candles is included in today's liturgy. So if you would go to church today, you may find out that the priest will together, we will with candles make a procession into the church. The reason or the symbol is that Christ, the light of the world, is entering into his temple, such that light is now coming into the world. The light of Christ is shining into my life and into your life. And if you will allow this, then I want to say that today, the light of Christ will shine in our lives. Say amen, okay? The prophet Malachi, which would have been, or is our first reading today, is that says, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And suddenly there will come to the temple of the Lord, uh, to the temple, the Lord, the Lord who you seek. Now you see that whenever this is a prophecy that has already been fulfilled in the past, but that is to be fulfilled completely one day. Okay, now, John the Baptist appears and preaches. And the moment he appears in this temple, he is to prepare the way before the Lord. And immediately Christ came. And Jesus says, I will come back. So you and I are supposed to make this prophecy be, uh, come to pass. We are supposed to prepare the way before the Lord. And at the time we do not know or expect, suddenly, the Lord will come into his temple. The Lord will come and you know the temple is my heart. The temple is where the gathering of the brethren is. The temple is the place where it has been dedicated to God. The temple is the kingdom of God. And he says suddenly the, the Lord will appear in his kingdom. My dear friends, ours is to prepare and the Lord will appear. Jesus' presentation today signifies God's entrance to his temple. God made man, Jesus Christ. The Christ of the Lord entered his temple, presenting himself to those who were really searching for him. The Bible tells us that I have not told you to search for God in vain. All of us who seek God, may we, we would find him. Seek God today and you, Will be, you will find him, okay? Now, Simeon and Anna were two venerable elderly people dedicated to prayer and fasting. This is what we are called to do, pray and fast. And so their strong religious spirit rendered them able to recognize the Messiah. Do you think that our world today, in the face of pandemic, is on its knees and is fasting. What and how do you see this? Dear friends, today, you and I can also get on our knees in our own small way to pray and fast and wait for the Lord. At the end of the gospel of today, at the end of the gospel of today,
See, at the end of the gospel of today, Simeon's prophecy of Mary's suffering is emphasized. Pope John Paul II thought in Redemptoris Matter says that Simeon's words seem like a second annunciation to Mary. For they tell her of the actual historical situation in which the son is to accomplish his mission, namely in misunderstanding and sorrow. If God was misunderstood and his whole mission was in sorrow, then what about us? So when there is suffering, don't be, don't give up. All of us must suffer. All of us must have pain to be able to understand what real Christianity is about. Simeon's prophecy also announces that Christ will be a sign of contradiction. Saint Cyril of Alexandria, in one of his homilies, interpreted the word sign of contradiction like a noble cross. Please friends, note this expression, a noble cross. What is a noble cross? A cross is a symbol of disgrace, yet you call it a noble disgrace. As St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, the cross is a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. My suffering, my pain, my, 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 by going through suffering, well, people will never understand it. And that's the same as yours. Dear friends, let your suffering bring meaning to the world. Let this pandemic, let, let show to the world that God is God. This is a sign of contradiction in the sense that those who lose, those who lose appear as a, a foolish, while those those who lose will appear foolish, while those who recognize it will have power. This is serious for us. I pray today that all of us may grow. The presentation of the Lord concludes the celebration of the nativity with the offering of the virgin, of the virgin mother and the prophecy of Simeon, and now the event point to Easter. So now you understand why usually after 2nd of February, now the events will start moving towards Easter, suffering and pain. Dear friends, shall we be quiet and ask yourself, am I ready? Am I truly ready? What controls my spiritual life? Is it all about success? Or do I consider suffering like in sorrow as part of my daily offerings? Let us be quiet now and pray. <laughs>